same. He's off to the wars and gone. He's fighting for his planet here. His sword is buckled on. He's fighting for his own true love. His foes he does defy. He is the darling of my heart, my southern soldier boy. So 
string the banjo, a fine song by Mr. Stephen Collins Foster, one of the premier songwriters of the 19th century here in America. Very
knocked on the judge's door and said, Judge, Your Honor, I got to change my name. He says, well, if you're 21, I'll let you change your name today. What is your name now? He said, my name is Eugene Duda. Oh, Lordy. Judge says, I'll let you change it today. What do you want to change it to? He said, I want to change that Eugene to Zippity. Yes, uh, I'm Dennis Rohrball. Um, I'm battalion commander here for the Federal Forces at the uh, Funkstown reenactment. Uh, I carry the rank of colonel, and uh, I am running currently a, a battalion of around 60 to 70 men. Uh, we just have returned from a uh, battle in, in, the, uh, in the street, uh, the center street in Funkstown, which what we were trying to depict there was uh, just one of the small vignettes or uh, uh, pieces of the, uh, the the battle and the uh, the engagement that happened here. Um, Funkstown was actually considered a minor Confederate victory, and why it was is because it achieved its goal. Uh, after Gettysburg, Lee was retreating to try to get across the Potomac River, and uh, as he retreated, he retreated through Fairfield, Greencastle, Wayne's Bar. Uh, the Federal Army evacuated Gettysburg via Frederick and, uh, and Emmitsburg. And what they did is actually gave pursuit to Lee's army in an effort to try to uh, re possibly re-engage them and maybe uh, destroy Lee's army uh, before it had a chance to recross into the safety of Virginia. So Funkstown became uh, pivotal in, in that effort to uh, preserve the Confederate Army to keep them be, from being overrun by what uh, uh, Confederate forces were able to pursue it. Uh, actually, Funkstown was just part of the line that stretched from north uh, east of Hagerstown uh, and went through Funkstown and, and the Downsville area. And uh, this uh, basically was along that particular line. The Confederates actually entrenched here uh, in an effort to hold the line. Uh, the main, uh, the main body here was actually Stuart's cavalry, and uh, they kept harassing the Union troops as the Union troops advanced to try to, in turn, harass them. Uh, so they had made an effort and a decision and a determination to stand uh, on that line from Hagerstown through Funkstown. So Funkstown uh, eventually evolved into a, a sort of a minor conflict there were actually about 500 casualties here. So it was considered a battle, maybe not a major battle. It could have been a major battle had the, uh, the Potomac River at the time that it got swollen from uh, extensive rains uh, stayed up and had trapped Lee on this side. And basically it would have been the center of the Confederate, uh, Confederate line. But while the Confederate troops and Stuart's cavalry were here at Funkstown area and a line through to uh, Hagerstown, uh, holding in an effort to, uh, to forestall the, uh, the Union advance. Lee had opportunity then to uh, have the river go down, uh, make provisions for a pontoon bridge, 
and actually he was able to, in some places, cross the fording, although in many cases it was very perilous because the men were chest deep at least. Uh, but it did offer him an opportunity to, to, to escape. And the reason he got that is because the action here at Funktown bought him time. Uh, had the Union known all the particulars of the Union's uh, uh, troops and command of the amount of force that was here at Funkstown, they may have made other decisions because four miles down the road here were two corps of federal troops, which there was a strong uh, 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 amount of Confederates here at Funkstown, but they would have uh, certainly overwhelmed them. What actually engaged them here from the, from the federal side was, was mostly uh, Confederate cavalry, Averill and some of Buford's cavalry from Gettysburg. Now you also must remember that the Federals were beat up pretty hard at Gettysburg as well. So they had a bloody nose coming in here, but uh, they had orders to pursue. Um, Lee and his commanders uh, were, in essence, war weary and uh, they pursued uh, somewhat cautiously and uh, I guess that's for the historians to, uh, to sort out whether they could have pushed harder or not pushed harder. Um, but they uh, mainly, this was a cavalry engagement, there was, uh, there was federal infantry here as well, uh, the main being uh, uh, from the 1st Vermont and uh, there were also uh, contingents of uh, actually the uh, 7th Maryland, who we have represented in this street here, and uh, they were sent out mainly as skirmishers and, and to harass, and uh, basically they were a group of sharpshooters who would uh, pick off the Confederate sharpshooters as they tried to pick off the federal officers, so it got quite nasty. Uh, there were some major thrusts from both sides. Uh, there, there was an occasion when the Confederates advanced. And, and uh, routed some Union troops, took about 50 to 60 prisoners. And there was another instance where federal advance actually uh, had the same, same result. Uh, the Confederate and Union cavalry were engaged almost continuously during, during, the, uh, during the Battle of Funkstown here. Um, they basically fought to a standstill. Uh, the Union troops uh, basically held their position the Confederates held theirs in the entrenchments they had made. And when they, the, the Confederates had gotten, uh, the Confederate command here at Funkstown had gotten word that Lee was uh, able to safely start to, to cross the Potomac in the Williamsport area, uh, they made a decision to start a gradual withdrawal by stealth at night. And their, their first move was actually to move out of this location here in this line over across to the other side of Antietam Creek. And, uh, you know, when they got on the other side of Antietam Creek, they, they made several demonstrations to just show they were around. But what they, what they did is they actually gradually withdrew, withdrew, withdrew until they were safely out of the area. And uh, the, Confederal, uh, the Federal troops then did pursue them, uh, especially down around uh, uh, the, the Boons, well, actually a little west of Boonsboro. There was some minor engagements down there that was connected to this Funkstown uh, engagement. And actually one place down there, my home unit, the 3rd Maryland, was in on a uh, operation that actually took 300 Confederate prisoners at that location. So the Confederate line was starting to break through, but by the time they forced the issue, and by the time the Corps, the 1st and 6th Corps, got activated down four miles down the road here, till they got back, they went into camp the night before, and they didn't engage here. By the time they got back up, rested, and you know, because they had been a forced march from Gettysburg through Frederick to here and over South Mountain. By the time they got uh, able to mount some kind of offensive, the Confederates had already safely withdrawn across the uh, Potomac River, and then they were safely back on Virginia territory. And uh, at that point, uh, the uh, the Gettysburg campaign was at a close. For photos of the Funkstown reenactment, go to WashingtonCounty.com, keyword Civil War.